Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alora Hanks. I'm an admissions advisor here at Eastern Michigan University. I'm also an alum of the university and I am a current graduate student. So when I attended Eastern, my major was uh, psychology and I minored in criminal justice as well as social work. And I'm currently getting my master's in social work. And then I was also a resident advisor at my time while I was at Eastern in Putnam. So we have um, some advisors here, not some, but some RAs here, some resident advisors here with us today. Um, so we're gonna start with Jacob. And then if everyone could just introduce themselves, say what year you are, what major, and what resident hall you are um, an RA in. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Jacob Sari. I am a uh, third year student here. I'm a second year RA. Uh, I'm a finance major and I stay in uh, Putnam Hall. I've had two years of being an RA in Putnam Hall. Um, and then from there, um, we can just pass it on to uh, Trey. Hi everyone, my name is Trey Briscoe. I am in my third year here at Eastern. I am a psychology major. Um, and I have been an RA in WISE for two years, and I've lived in WISE for the last three. And I will pass it on to Micaiah. Hi, everyone. I promise I I have hair. It's just <laughs> not showing on. <laughs> but um, my name is Micaiah. I am a resident advisor here for our Live and Learning community um, here called Sisterhood Scholars. I've been an RA for two years, and I'm a junior studying social work. Social work, psychology, yes. Okay, so I'm getting my screen together. Okay, so first, I am going to show you all um, our next steps for incoming freshman webpage. Just so you all know, our enrollment form is now open. Um, completing the enrollment form confirms and commits you to EMU in the fall. And it also registers you for SOAR, which is our in-person orientation. And at orientation, you register for your classes. So you all want to keep in mind that classes are first come, first serve. And then our housing application has also opened, as you all know. So I'm going to show you all where to find the housing application as well. So let me share my screen. Share. Okay. Can you guys see this next steps for freshmen? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So this is located at emish.edu slash admit. Um, this will be the web page that comes up. First, you want to activate your My Emish account. So activating your My Emish account, you will need your EID as well as your um, net ID. You are provided with this in your acceptance email. So you have to do this first and you wanna make sure that you do this on your computer. A lot of people try to do these things on their phone, but it doesn't work on your phone. So this is your first step. And then after you register your My Emish account, you're gonna come back to this website and you're gonna scroll down to fill out the EMU enrollment form. Um, you're gonna need your same login information. So your net ID, as well as the password that you would have just created for your My Image account. Um, from there, you're going to select your SOAR date. Um, you, everyone wants to make sure that you have your official transcript submitted um, before your SOAR date. So if you have not submitted an official transcript um, at this time, then you definitely want to uh, make sure next week when you go back to school that you ask your counselor um, how you submit it. A lot of schools use parchment, but some schools use different systems. So you should just touch base with your counselor and they'll be able to help you from there. So that is your next steps for enrolling to the university and getting your classes all together for the fall. Now we're going to go over to the housing website. So that's emish.edu slash housing. This is going to be the uh, welcome page that comes up. So the housing application, you're going to go to applications. 
And then you're gonna come over here to first year students. Click on that. Okay, so these are some frequently, um, frequently asked questions here that you guys can click on. If you have some questions. And then the actual housing application, you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says application access. And you're gonna click on this online application portal. You will uh, sign in with your My Image information here as well. So that net ID and the password that we talked about. Let me stop sharing screen. Okay, there we go. So those are your next steps and your housing application. Um, we are going to get started. You all can ask some questions and the resident advisors are gonna answer your questions for you. Let's just make sure that we put our questions in the Q and A box. And we're gonna keep an eye out for your questions and let's get started. So who has some questions? So it looks like we got a question from Crystal. I hope I'm saying that right. Do I pay the $150 first, then find a roommate? Um, who would like to answer? If not, I'll take it. Trey, go ahead. Hi, yeah. So typically the way it works is you pay them $150 and then you are taken to the application where you fill it out and ask you all these questions like, oh, I go to sleep at eight o'clock in the morning, or I like to wake up at, you know, 11 o'clock at night, just to ask you all these personality questions about yourself. And then it would match you with someone to be your roommate. If you have like a friend at school or like maybe your next door neighbor is also going to Eastern, you can also like them as your roommate. But that $150 is kind of the paywall before you can get the process rolling. Well said, Trey. Um, just to add, just think of it as a deposit you will put down every year just to put hold the spot um, in housing, not like a, in a specific call, just in housing in general. So when it's time to pick a roommate, you also get to pick out um, what hall you want to live in. So if you have an interest in a certain hall, um, you can do that if you want. And then it'll take you to the questionnaire about yourself. And yeah, you can find a roommate through that. Okay, just had another resident advisor join us, Becca. Hi, Becca. Oh, uh, sorry, my computer is being really slow. <laughs> it's, it's okay. So everyone um, introduce themselves, what year they are, your major, and how long you've been a resident advisor. Uh-oh. Can she hear us? It, I, for me? Yeah, Becca. Okay, sorry. Um, okay. Hi everyone, my name is Becca. Um, I am a senior here at Eastern. I'm studying public relations and graphic design. Um, I've lived on campus for four years and I've been an RA for the past three years. Nice. Okay, so let's get back to our questions. Go ahead, Makaya. So we have another one from Crystal. Where do I find the Facebook group for finding a roommate? Does anybody have an answer to this one? Oh, go ahead, Trey. Um, so if you just type in like to Google what I did, I just typed in like Eastern Michigan, like um, freshman Facebook group. It's like a group that um, it like you can join. So it's like people from past years are also in there too. So if you just like do a quick type, even into Facebook too, it'll show up. It's very like simple. Okay, so um, just to piggyback off that question, um, through the housing portal, once you're um, told like who your roommate is, you'll be able to talk to them through that. Um, and your suite mates, you can like exchange phone numbers. But we also have an app called EMU Engage. So if you want to download that and make friends and get to know some of the people who will be attending um, Eastern Michigan, you can do that as well. Um, does anybody want to 
say anything before I move on? All right, cool. So Juliana said, does Eastern usually give out financial help for housing? So it kind of depends um, for everyone's specific situation, but there are housing grants that um, some people who live on campus do receive, and those are specifically put towards housing. Um, but other than that, most of the general scholarships that Eastern gives out will cover just tuition and not room and board, unless you have like the presidential scholarship, which um, covers full tuition and full room and board. Thanks, Becca. Okay, we have another question from Jonathan. How long after submitting your application do you find out who your roommate is to contact and coordinate what items to bring with me at Mobin? So when you um, go onto your housing application and you like know the person that you want to room with, so you make like a group, they call it a group with them. Um, and that's just saying, I want to room with them kind of thing. Um, and that's when you would like, no. Yeah, unless you um, apply for housing really late on in the summer, you are not automatically paired with someone for your roommate. So you'll know who your roommate is because you'll kind of choose them or you'll go in randomly and then it'll still tell you in that system that Trinity was talking about. So you can message each other through there and then exchange Instagram, Snapchat, phone numbers and things like that. So that's usually how you get into coordinating who can bring what and getting to know each other. Okay, my freshman year, we were like, I was here two weeks early and I had the room all to myself and I didn't think I was getting a roommate. But lo and behold, <laughs> my um, roommate, she had texted me and she was like, hey, roomie. And I'm like, oh my God, no. And um, she's like, <laughs> she's like, I want to um, see, like, I heard you were already there. Like, what should I bring? So it's very helpful to do that because I had like so much stuff from an open house. Um, so I just told her like, you can bring this, that, and the third. So we were able to like work something out. So I highly recommend talking to them um, and your suite mates because you will like, you know, have to clean the bathroom so you can get a schedule going right there before you even get it to campus. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a question for you all because I know you said that you can get paired randomly with roommates and you did your um your questionnaire about yourselves but were you given a list of individuals that kind of were like like shared the same interests as you and you all selected through those individuals is that how that worked or you guys didn't select anybody at all uh, 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 jacob we haven't heard from you <laughs> um, so yeah, I have actually some good insight on this. I um, just resubmitted my housing application recently. Um, so yeah, you go in and complete your housing application. And um, after you were able to um, complete those questions, um, you would get a list of everybody that has like completed the housing application. And it would be sorted from like most compatible to least compatible based, at, based on those. So at the top, you'd have like a person with like 90% compatibility and just slowly work your way down. And you have the option, like um, like Becca was touching on, to uh, just message them individually, uh, get their Snapchats, and start talking to them. And then from there, kind of see if you um, uh, would work out uh, together well as um, uh, roommates there. Thank you for clarifying, Jacob. OK, so we have another question. Go ahead, Makaya. OK, so Jonathan, this is a good question. Do the residence halls provide any type of supplies for for <laughs> residents for rooms, such as toilet paper, cleaning supplies, et cetera? If so, what is provided? Trinity. So we do provide um, toilet paper. However, I will say, don't expect for it to be super nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we do provide like things like pots, pans, things that you can take if you need like 
we have like simple things like hammers and things like that. Um, and other than that, we provide your furniture, of course, <laughs> and all that. But um, that's basically, and you can go to the front desk for all of that stuff too. And a vacuum. Vacuum too. Yes, and mops and brooms. Okay. Something. Okay, we got something in the Q and A box. Crystal said, "What residence hall has communal bathrooms?" Please take it away, Trey. <laughs> that is my uh, my lovely home, Wise Hall. It has communal bathrooms. Each floor um, is gendered, and each floor has two bathrooms on each side, or has one bathroom on each side. Each uh, bathroom has five toilet stalls and five shower stalls. I want to say there's about eight sinks in there as well. Um, in my own personal experience, I've never really been in there where like at a time when it's been like packed to the brim. Um, so it's definitely not as bad as it may seem. I haven't really had many issues with it over my time. Thanks, Trey. So, um, although WISE has community bathrooms, it does have air conditioning. So, you know, <laughs> let that be a part of your option, I guess. Also, another thing about the bathroom is you never have to clean it. They clean it like three or four times a day. So you don't have to worry about cleaning it up. But you will have to keep in mind, you probably want to be mindful of the other people using the bathroom. Um, Trey, I was in there the other day. Is there like a rule for if you have guests, you know, um, them being on the floor using the bathroom? Maybe you can talk about that. Yeah. So if you have a guest that is a member of the opposite sex, then they will have to go to one of the other floors. Um, so, for example, um, the fifth floor is for uh, feminine presenting people and then the fourth floor is for masculine presenting people say that like Micaiah you have a friend and say Alfred's with, like hanging out with you and he wants to come he wants to use the bathroom he would have to come down to the fourth floor and ask me to swipe him in or go down to the first floor where we have the gender neutral bathroom okay um thank you Trey someone asks does Eastern have a student gym Yeah, um, uh, Eastern does have a student gym. Uh, it's called our Rec Island Facilities. A um, lot of cool stuff available in there, whether you're just interested in general weightlifting, there's Olympic lifting, free weights, uh, machine lifting, along with cardio equipment. Um, a lot of tabletop games as well, if you're just looking for uh, something fun to do uh, with your uh, roommates or get to know some people. Uh, basketball courts, uh, full-size track, um, two different pools, both a club and Olympic-sized swimming pool. Uh, with that club, you also have a hot tub and a sauna. Um, and yeah, a lot of cool stuff available in there, as well as uh, Shake Smart is also located right in there. Um, protein shakes, acai bowls, it's one of my favorite places to go on campus. Um, and yeah, uh, that uh, access to that um, facilities is about is uh, $50 a semester. Uh, you're free to opt out if you feel as though you're not going to use it. But with all of the um, uh, things that you're given, I, it's, it's the best gym deal that you can possibly get. Yeah. And just so you guys know that $50 is just included on your e-bill and uh, the rec was just renovated. Like, this is really nice. My time on campus didn't look like this. So <laughs> you guys have a really nice, you have a really nice rec now. Um, okay, let's go to our next question. <laughs> the students have to clean the bathrooms and why? <laughs> um, uh, we answered that one. So... What is the most popular residence hall? Go ahead, Trey. For um, first year students, so the buildings that I live in, Sellers, Phelps, Walt, and Putnam, it's called our first year center. And they're called the first year center because that's where like most freshmen tend to live. So it's just pretty basic, basic rooms with like two beds and then you share a bathroom with the two people next door. Um, however, next year, Walton and Putnam is being renovated, so just Sellers and Phelps will be open. I would say they're pretty popular, especially like Sellers and Phelps are pretty popular. Um, 
Yeah, I think they're good for a first year. I think they're good for your first year. I will say that um, most resident halls that have live and learning communities tend to be popular. So I won't say it's like a particular residence hall. I think it's a floor. So you might have like a floor that's like, you know, um, very popular because some people tried to get into it. So we have like an arts appreciation floor. We have a spectrum floor. We have a brotherhood floor. We have a sisterhood floor. So, and some of those are capped because we can't have, you can only have with doubles, it's about 30 rooms on my floor. So about, you know, less than 60 people. So it's like, people are trying to get in that because they want to be in those programs or those communities. So it just makes the halls kind of popular. Go ahead, Becca. Yeah, I think another thing too is just what people are looking to be physically around on campus. I would say Downing, Best, and Buell. Um, a lot of students really like those because they're right across the street from Pray Herald, um, which is where a lot of classes are, especially for those first year students. So I lived in Best for three years and I could literally um, get out of bed 10 minutes before class and still make it there before the professor like it's just super convenient um, those buildings and wise are all right next to the commons which is the all you can eat um, cafeteria um, the buildings that trinity we're talking about is also right next to the eateries which is our late night option for food so um, they're all all the residence halls are around a dining location so that won't be a concern for students and then we also have the towers, which um, are really great for students who want to be um, closer to uh, the student center. So they're a little bit further from the academic buildings, but only by about like five to eight more minutes walking. But it all just depends on what kind of environment you're looking around. So some people really like being around the eateries because it's more social. A lot of people like to hang out in the eateries and things like that. Um, or some people really just want to be right next to the commons, ease of access for food, or right across the street from where their classes are going to be. So that kind of helps people kind of choose uh, a building if they're not sure, because it can be kind of intimidating when all the buildings have the same kind of room layout. So Mm -hmm. If you kind of look on the map and see what's around it, that can help you make your decision too. Okay, um, Ella said, are the walls paper thin where you can hear your neighbors? Are we allowed to hang at heavy things on the walls? Go ahead. <laughs> so it ultimately depends. Uh, I found that like some walls are thinner than others. Um, there are like, if you're worried about noise, we have like certain rules in housing regarding noise. Like we have the, the quiet hours that are start at 10 PM on the weekend or on the weekdays and then midnight on the weekends where it's like, you know, kind of being mindful of how loud it is. And then we have courtesy hours 24 seven, which is just like, you want to kind of keep an eye on how loud you're being just because like if it's like four o'clock and you're like throwing a party you don't want people to be like doing homework or in a zoom call or something like that so if you're ever worried about like the dorm being too loud you can always call your ra and they can handle it um and as far as heavy things on the wall it depends on how heavy um command strips are your best friend um as far as like hanging things up like those will get you through college as far as hanging things up in your dorm room you don't want to like drill anything or like affect the wall in any way because we do have to check the rooms after you leave and there is like billing involved and stuff like that so i would just if you can't hang it up with a command strip or a command hook then i wouldn't uh bring it thanks Jay. Um, i just wanted to say during our finals week we um go on a 24 hour um quiet hours so um about right now, like probably next week, we're going uh, quiet hours, 24 hours a day. So um, yeah, it really depends on um, your floor too. <laughs> like some floors are different. Some floors are very quiet and very calm and chill. Then you have some floors that are like, there's somebody <laughs> or like some, a pair of roommates or a pair of students that are just like, they have to have their music on or they have to be out every night. So yeah, definitely, as long as you're cool with your RA, you can put it on us. Like, we'll, we'll be the ones that'll like go to them and say, okay, you gotta come down. I don't know why I muted myself after the questions. So Juliana said, how do you apply for the housing grants you mentioned earlier?
Laura, do you know more about the application for grants? Um, not specifically to what you mentioned earlier, Becca. I know when you complete your FAFSA, um, you know, you that's applying you for different grants. But how we were saying earlier, the scholarships go for tuition. So I was actually not aware of the housing grants that you spoke about. Trey. Um, so I believe that after you are in housing for a set amount of time, I'm not entirely sure what like the time limit is, like you get like a scholarship that goes towards your housing. And then the correct me if I'm wrong, Laura, but the way the EBO works, it kind of condenses it all into one big price. So like any aid you get covers that housing. I believe mm -hmm. I'm not sure because I, I haven't paid for housing in a bit, <laughs> but it like any aid you get covers that. Um, yeah. So I know, sorry, Trey, were you still talking? I know that um, like when you receive your financial aid package and if you receive like student loans and things like that, when you accept your student loans, that will automatically go towards housing and tuition and all of that for sure. Um, yeah. Do we have any more questions? Anything in the chat? Oh. I swear I closed the chat and opened in three appeared, four. So, um, oh yeah, we got some questions. Okay. Are you allowed to opt out from housing if you don't like it mid semester? Can you just say that you are returning home if you don't like it? Anybody like to answer? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so the way it works is we have a contract release system. It's kind of difficult because when you sign that contract at the beginning of the year, it's like you're agreeing to, to live there and pay for it for the entire year. So it's typically like you have to um, ask to be released from the contract and only certain reasons get approved. Like if you're withdrawing for the semester, you're transferring out. Um, so on, like it, it ultimately depends if there's like a, a good reason you might be able to get out of it. Um, but it is like a, a binding contract because they want you to pay that. Yeah, I was going to say if a student wishes to go home and doesn't want to live on campus anymore, I mean, you could do that, but you are still responsible for paying for that for that dorm room. Yeah, and, like, it wouldn't be, like, an issue if you, like, upped and moved all your stuff out and went home. But as far as, like, not paying for that rest of the year, that's kind of a, a more difficult area just because of, the, like, the legal aspect of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is... Living at Eastern worth it? I've heard mixed opinions. Go ahead, Jacob. Yeah, so, so in my personal opinion, yes. Um, obviously, you're going to have mixed reviews from different uh, people. People are going to have different experiences, but my experience has been overwhelmingly positive. That's why I stay on campus as an RA for until my third year. Um, so just some things. Um, I've met a huge friend group here. That is one major thing that you get from um, staying on campus. Uh, you get to meet a lot of those people on your uh, your floor, and you get to make a lot of cool friends through that. Um, I actually met my girlfriend through uh, living on campus, so that's another plus. Um, and you get to be a part of a really cool community on campus. Um, a lot I know, like so many people, as soon as I walk into the eateries, it's super uncommon that I don't at least see three people I don't that I don't know. Um, so you get to know a whole lot of people. You get to make a whole lot of cool connections, and um, yeah, you get to make a whole lot of friends as well. Um, so, like I said, I highly recommend. Becca Yeah, I also, again, personal experience, but I believe it is worth it. Um, I specifically, when I was applying to colleges, was looking at a school that I would be able to live on campus and I wouldn't have to commute from home. Um, just because of that community that Jacob was talking about was something that was really important to me. And also, like, I'm the youngest child in my family, so I wanted to move out and be more independent and things like that. And I, that's also why I still am an RA, so I can live on campus. But 
I also think just being physically on campus a lot of the times versus commuting, it, you're just more likely to be involved on campus and it pushes you to use a lot of the resources on campus. I have gotten all my jobs because, you know, I lived on campus. I wouldn't like I would have I wouldn't have done this if I didn't live on campus. I've gotten four jobs because of this. I've gotten three internships. I've done all these things because I've made those connections through people I've lived on campus. All my friends I met because I live on campus. So like I wouldn't go to the library as much if I was a commuter. Like, but now I'm like the library is an eight minute walk from where I live. So I might as well just go. Um, I'll go to this event. I'll go to tutoring. I'll go to my professor's office hours because I'm already here. So it's really helpful when like, sometimes it can be hard for commuters because they're like, oh, I don't wanna have to drive back and forth like all day, every day. Um, I, that's not to say that you can't get involved as a commuter. I know some commuters that are more involved than people who live on campus because they make sure like they're getting their time out of being on campus, but it's all just kind of personal preference. I also don't have a car, so I need to be on campus. So it's just, you know, different things, but to me, it's definitely worth it just because of the opportunities, the resources in the community that Jacob talked about. Yeah, I think just kind of piggybacking off of what Becca and Jacob have both said, the community is great here and you're kind of able to build your own thing. And I think that's one of the beautiful parts of it. And I think just some of the experiences that you're able to get living on campus, you can't really replicate, you know, being a commuter. And like like Becca said, that's not like bashing anyone who's a commuter because I understand, you know, like living on housing isn't cheap. Um, and that's why I became RAs. <laughs> but like, it's just, it's a part of, I feel like one of the best part of my college experiences has been like going to insomnia cookies at one o'clock in the morning, you know, or like <laughs> walking to this new calzone place, DPDO at like 10 after getting off from work in the desk. You know, I think part of the college experience is having those relationships. And I think there's just an aspect of that that you don't exactly get um if you don't live on campus but you know i think you have to do what's best for you at the end of the day you know if if you don't think that if you think living at home is what's best for you then that's 100 percent the best decision you know to make so i think it just changed from person to person and like when it comes time to make that decision you know you do what's best for you yeah i agree with everyone look i just wanted to leave I'm just gonna be honest. I, I want to leave. Sometimes you just need a break from home. And this is the perfect break. Nobody's telling you to get up. Nobody's telling you to do the dishes. It's like, it's everything you can imagine. Like, that's just, you can do whatever you want. You can wake up whenever you want. Like, but still go to class. Please go to class and do whatever is best for you. I was gonna say, Makaya, yeah, there's nobody there to tell you what to do and everything. But at the same time, you have to be responsible and get up for class. You know, you got to go to the library, like Becca was saying. You got to go do your homework. You know, you got to do those things. Um, and just to talk a little bit about my experience real quick, and then we're going to hop to Trinity. Um, I think living on campus was one of the best things I could have ever done. Um, my family lives in Canton. Canton is just about 20 minutes away from EMU. And my family kept asking me, like, you know, are you going to commute? And I'm like, no, like, I want a full college uh, experience. So if you're looking for that full college experience, that college community, um, being away from home, living on campus is definitely the best way to do that. And then it really helps you grow as a person. I think living on campus and being away from home helped me find out who I was and the things that I actually like. Because like Makai was saying, it's, it's nobody there to tell you what's right, what's wrong, what's this, what's that. Now, you know, your parents have instilled those things into you and, you know, you should be able to make those decisions, but it's just a little bit, you know, easier, you know, being on your own and learning those things. Trinity. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in really quick. I feel like me personally, I'm not from Michigan, I'm from Ohio. And um, I felt like it was good for me because one, it's really close to my home. And two, like as like a positive experience, I have like learned to like step out of my bubble and like get to more comfortable, like meeting new people, talking to new people, learning from people. There's lots of like opportunities on campus. I will say too, like employment wise, just 
like in every aspect, I would say there's lots of opportunities to like get involved with different organizations, employment wise, social, academic. You can like literally email your professor and be like, hi, do you know of anything in this field around campus? And they'll probably email you back with like a slew of, you can get involved here, here and here. Even our advising center, um, I have my advisors tell me all the time, you know, you should, I'm a marketing major, you should get involved with the marketing club because they have a lot of connections and things like that. So I would say it was definitely positive to like form connections with people. Okay, I wanna, um, sorry, I'm okay. I just wanna remind everybody, let's put our questions in the Q&A box just so we can keep track of all of our questions. I see we have some questions in the Q&A box and we have some questions in the chat. Let's answer Javon's question in the chat really quick and then go back to the Q&A box. You muted. You're muted. Come on. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, forgive me. Javon said, like, what are things that are provided in the room that we won't need to bring? Um, okay, go ahead. I was gonna say, you got it. Go ahead, Dre. You can take it if you want. Um, so yeah, it depends on what room you live in, but typically every room will have a bed, um, and then a dresser and then a desk with a chair. Um, so you don't really have to bring anything regarding like the bare necessities, but now like mini fridge, um, like your appliances that you want to bring, you would have to provide those yourself. Um, and like your, in your rooms with like bathrooms and suites in it. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I've never had my own bathroom, actually. Um, you get, like, you know, your toilet, obviously, your sink, um, your shower, all that. But, like, everything else that you would need to bring. It's kind of like you're moving into, like, an apartment, um, like a furnished apartment. Um, it just has the basics, but you would have to bring, like, your own sheet, your own, like, mattress topper if you want it, your own pillows, all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to the Q&A box. Um, is admissions different than enrollment? If anybody wants to take that. Um, I, I guess I'll try to answer that. Okay. I'm trying to think of the best way how to explain it. So the admissions office is like your first step to the university. You know, your application goes through the admissions office. Um, you meet with the admissions advisors like me, you meet, um, even though these lovely students are resident advisors, they're also tour guides and coordinators. So you meet with them, they take you out on a tour and enrollment is committing to the university and saying, okay, in the fall, I'm going to go to Eastern next, next fall, next semester. So that's kind of the difference. Admissions is is you know teaching you about EMU and your your first connections are at the admissions office and then enrollment seals the deal you're you're an eagle you're an eagle at that point okay <laughs> okay what's our next question so when do you get to be an RA um I can answer I can start the you know the question yeah, okay so, in order to be an RA you must live on campus for one full year then you can apply um, most of us applied after our first year so we've been RA since sophomore year basically um we it's a different kind of process once you apply for it you have to go through like two separate interviews, then you go through a whole different training process. And then once you're in, we do another training. So um, they keep us busy. So um, yeah, that's basically the rules. Um, you will just apply after your first year living on campus. Um, and then they'll take you through this process. And it's actually really fun. I think that's the best time to bond with the RAs. Like during training, it is the funny, it's so funny. Like we have so much fun. Go ahead, Becca. Yeah. So um, when Kaya, what, like what you all are saying, like it could seem like really overwhelming. It's not necessarily hard to apply to be an RA. It's just a very lengthy process because they're just trying to get to know you more. Um, and it kind of changes year to year. So um, 
it looks a little different than when I did it versus what it's happening now, just because, you know, changing the process, also trying to make it, um, you know, because of COVID, everything changed, it had to be virtual, but so usually you do the application and that's just the um, kind of the bare bones get to know you. And then from there, you'll get pulled into interviews. And then um, the way it was this year, it was one interview that was just like a normal interview, you know, trying to get to know you, ask questions, and then one um, kind of presentation to kind of show how you could like benefit housing as an RA. Um, and then once you um, become an RA, you have a training in um, the fall. So you get early move in, which is what Kai was talking about. It's a really good chance to bond with your staff. Um, and that's where they teach you how to be an RA. So don't worry if you're like, I don't, I don't know how to do any mediation. I don't know any crisis response or anything like that. Because that's what that training is for. It's there to teach you. And you learn something new every year. So it's not super difficult to become an RA. It's just a very lengthy process. Because they also want to see who's like actually serious about being an RA and who's going to stick around. Because um, it is... Uh, a kind of demanding job in like terms of like time and things you have to do and things like that. So it's definitely something that, um, you know, if you're interested, make sure you're, you know about it, you know, that chat to your RAs, they'll definitely be willing to tell you more about what it is we do because it's not just planning fun events. It's also working the desk, being on duty, doing all these, going to meetings and stuff like that. So um, but it is a good opportunity to be more involved on campus and that um, room and board is also a really nice benefit as to why most of us are RAs and it can just help us be here to build that community. Really quick, Becca, did you say it's two interviews? This year it was two interviews kind of back to back, but it again changes per year. When I did it, it was um, one interview with two people and then we actually had like a, a little class that we had to go through for three sessions. But yeah, swoop school, throwback. Um, hmm. But this year, yeah, it was more just two interviews. Well, when I was an RA, it was, you had a one-on-one -on -one interview first with, I think it was the complex directors. And then we had group interviews after that. And the current resident advisors were like interviewing us essentially and like taking notes on us and stuff. So it's interesting to hear the different processes. There was a lot of people in there at that time too. Um, <laughs> Trey, you go, what were you gonna say? Um, I was just going to say that, like, yeah, it is, it is a, a lengthy process, like Becca said, but also another aspect of it is, like, even if you don't, like, if you're not sure if you're interested, I would still apply for it, because there are many chances, like, step out of the process along the way, and, like, say you get to the very end and you get it, you can say no. Um, so that's, a, you know, that's a nice part about it. And then also, say, you like, you really want it, but you don't get it initially, there's a good chance you'll end up getting called about it anyway because we have an alt list that people are put on and that list goes like that because people turn the job down, they transfer out, they decide they want to go other places. So like, I know a lot of people that have been called up on the alt, alt list before. Um, let's hear from Trinity really quick. I personally was an alternate. I didn't get told I was an RA until two weeks before we had to be here. <laughs> So um, I would say even like my, okay, so um, I think there was an email that was sent like, I think two weeks before just asking if they had any positions open and I ended up getting this one because I emailed them and asked um, and they had like, I think my floors are basically like overflow. They didn't expect to have as many people living on campus as they did. So um, I was chosen, but yeah, even that just like people drop all the time for different reasons. So if you're alternate, like don't be discouraged or anything. Take it. Yeah, I'm just gonna give a just a touch more insight on like the uh, like the actual like times of the deadlines. Uh, typically, that application does open up in that like late fall of your first semester, so that'll start opening up in like October, November. 
Uh, that first interview will be coming around January, and by March, you will probably know uh, whether you're an RA, alt list, or just, you know, uh, got declined. But just a little bit more of a, you know, uh, tighter insight on that. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at about 10 minutes. I want us to get through these questions. And then if we have enough time at the end, I kind of want you guys to give a little bit more detail on what the RA role looks like. A little bit more detail. Okay. Um, what appliances are allowed in the dorm? So as Trey was saying earlier, like your mini fridge, um, microwave. I would say that's really about it, right? Appliances wise. There is a like a kitchen on the um floor, but that's about eight with appliances. And you guys can't have candles. I know some people ask that. Yeah, Becca. <laughs> yeah, so um, appliance-wise, you can bring in a mini fridge, you can bring in a microwave, you can bring in kettles or coffee makers. So whatever you prefer, you can have those. Um, you can also have um, like a toaster. Um, pretty much the recommended not to bring is just anything with those open heat sources or that take more wattage. So things like toaster ovens, not really, um, don't bring those, or like George Foreman type grills, don't really bring those, hot plates, um, not those, but again, if you're wanting to like cook cook, there is a kitchen in every building. Um, I have fully made like cookies in the kitchen, I've made dumplings, like homemade dumplings so many times in the kitchens in Best, um, the, the only downside to the kitchens is you always get jealous when someone else is cooking because it makes the whole floor smell really good or really bad if they burn their popcorn. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and there are also like pots and pans, like um, Trinity mentioned earlier, that you can get at the front desk. So it's not like if you're like, well, I want to cook, but I don't have anything to cook. You don't have to go out and buy pots and pans. You can go and get those from the desk, borrow them, just wash them before you return them. But yeah, also in the... The big kitchens there is like an oven um like a sink and there is a microwave so if you don't have your own microwave you can also usually use the one in the lounge that's new they didn't have pots and pans for us that's nice <laughs> trinity um i personally have like a smoothie maker like a neutral bullet type thing those are acceptable and then i know there's stuff on amazon too that's like not considered an open heat source but you can still like if you can search them on TikTok. <laughs> it's like a, a closed type of pan type of deal, but I would get creative and like search on there too. Thanks, Trinity. Okay, let's go to our next question. Would you guys say being an RA is competitive? When I, when I was one, it was. I think things are different now because of COVID. Trey, sorry. Um, I would say that it's like a slightly competitive process. I think it ultimately just depends on like the people you surround yourself with. Um, because like you can, if you like have a whole dorm where there are like 15 other people that want to be RAs, it's going to be like the talk. Um, but if you're, like, you're the only one, everyone's going to be in here. You're like, oh, you're going to be great. You're going to do great. So it just depends on how you kind of surround yourself. As far as like the actual process itself, it ultimately just depends on like how you are, like how you put yourself out there. Um, to the complex directors and to like the GHCs and everyone um, because it does help to like know somebody and it does help to kind of have good relationships with like the staff members and stuff like that. Okay. Um, what were you going to say, Kai? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I know some people who like apply every single year. Like they, they um, you know, or get on the alternate list and reapply all the time. So like Trey said, just make sure you like surround yourself by people. I, um, my RA, her name is Karis. She was my um, first year RA and she literally yes. like, she literally was like, you applying? Like, and we sat down and she kind of like, like, she told me everything I needed to know. Like she was like helping me out. So by the time I got to the interview, like it was such an easy process. And um, when they called me back, I'm like, did you say something to them? She was like, no. And I still think she did. but. <laughs> but yeah definitely surround yourself with people talk to your RA like that is a great thing to do reach out to your own RA and be like what do I do I've helped all my residents now get to where I'm at so 
Yeah, I was going to say um, your your RA is watching, right? Because it's people we come to you. Oh, hey, I want to be your RA. I want to be your RA. But if that's the same person with the noise complaints, is the if that's the same person that's causing all the issues. When you come back to your RA and ask for that letter of recommendation, they might not have a letter for you. I've had to do that to a couple of people. So, you know, you definitely want to make sure you're leading by example. Um, RAs are definitely leaders on campus. So you guys definitely want to make sure um, you're doing that. Becca, I see your hand, but let's get to, we got about two more questions and then we'll come back to you, okay? Um, so this one says, do you have to be there for the whole summer before the summer, when it, before the school year to be an RA? Similarly, do you, do they provide the training during the summer? So you have to be on campus for one year. So year is, it starts in the fall and it ends, you know, winter semester. So you have to be there fall, winter, and then training starts in the summertime because you move in early. Um, on campus, Trey. Oh, I was just gonna say. Um, so you kind of hit on hitting on the coffin, but um, you don't have to be there the whole summer. We have something called summer staff where you can apply for it, and you can be here during the summer if you want to. If they select you, you can be here during the summer, um, but you don't have to. You typically will move in. I want to say the second week of August, so like August fourteenth to like the seventeenth, you'll move in that weekend typically, and then training will start like that Monday. So that's kind of how it looks like. And then it was one in the chat. Are the laundry facilities in the dorm and will we need to bring quarters for the machines? Becca. Yeah, so there is a laundry room in every building. The location will vary. Usually it's on the ground floor, but sometimes it might be on like the third floor. Just different for that. Um, and yes, you will need to bring either quarters to pay or um, our laundry facilities are hooked up through an app called Pay Range. Um, and you can load funds from like your card directly on the app and then you can it you just pay right through the app so you don't have to have quarters um I use quarters pretty much the whole time because I got a lot of quarters for grad gifts because everyone's like oh you're gonna have to do laundry here's a bunch of quarters so um but you don't have to have quarters I know some people strictly just pay through their phone through the app um but it is about a dollar 25 to do a wash and a dollar 25 to do um a load to dry um the nice thing about the hmm. app i'm having trouble connecting to the sorry internet. my device oh, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um wow and she's gonna keep talking so i'm gonna Don't keep myself. talking <laughs> yeah my alexa do what she want to do too i get it back um did you uh did you want to say what you were you were going to say something else earlier too becca um, I don't remember what I was going to say earlier, but the nice thing about the app too is it'll show you the available ones. So if you're within range too, you don't have to lug all your stuff down just to see that, oh, there's no open washers and things like that. Go, while we're talking about laundry, um, make sure you, you know how to do laundry before coming to college. You'll be surprised how many people go to their RA or go to the front desk and they're like, I need help. I don't know what to do. So um, yeah. Teach your students how to how to do laundry. If they're not doing their own laundry, they should be. It's not fun when you have to go and teach these people how to do laundry. <laughs> okay, so we um, we have one more. We have time for one more question. I was going to say this app that's new too. That's fancy. All we had was quarters when I was on campus. Um. Does anybody else have any questions before we log off? Micaiah, why don't you talk about really quick some things that resident advisors do on campus? What's your role? What's your job? So, you know, um, as a resident advisor, we kind of just bring a sense of community onto the campus. Um, I like to think of it as me being like your big sister, occasional mom. Um, I have about 46 girls, so I definitely feel like a bomb sometimes, but definitely it's like being like the big sister or, big, or the big brother of the floor is kind of just welcoming, um, 
our students in, getting them engaged with campus, making sure that they're following the rules because housing does have rules. I think a lot of students come and they think like freedom and I can do whatever I want. And we are the people that instill like, well, you gotta have, there are some rules to live here. So we kind of keep everything in line on the floor. Um, we make sure you're up to date with things that happen in the halls as well. And we put on programs to um, bring in engagement. So one of my programs last semester was a movie night, um, well, a self-care night. And we watched uh, Cheetah Girls 2, we laughed, we talked, and we just talked about like how it is adjusting to college because I have um, freshmen all on my floor. So that was a really good program for them. So we gear certain programs um, during our blocks so just so that everybody can gain something from each program. And we put up bulletin boards. Um, my favorite time of the year to put up, put up bulletin boards is probably Black History Month. Like we go all out in our halls. Like it's just so much fun. So um, yeah, and another thing you can do um, as an RA, you can like get your um, like campus engagement. You can go out with your um, residents and have them like sign something and y'all can hang out like on campus at like the Friday night movies. And that can be one of your engagements that counts. So it's just all about, you know, being a people person, getting to know them. Um, you still have to do your job and be a mandated reporter, <laughs> but um, it's, it's so worth it. I think personally for me, like the bonds that I have from being an RA, like they really look up to me. One, um, one girl, she asked me to do a, a project, a leadership project. And I was like, am I getting old? Like, I was just like, so honored. So I, I do love being an RA, especially for our LeBron community. Yeah, I would say I still have um, connections with some of my residents. Um, one of them actually does the same thing that I do. She's an admissions advisor over at Oakland, and I actually got to see her at a college fair the other day. So it was like full circle. It was really cool. Um, so we are at our time, guys. I definitely appreciate everyone for coming out. Um, and learn a little bit more about housing and hearing from our resident advisors. Uh, everyone did great tonight. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, housing application is open. Let me show you guys one more time. Okay, this is the housing application. Or you can go to the housing application, go to applications, first year, Scroll down, click on online application portal. You'll need your My eMish information to log in for that. And then also the next steps for freshmen. You'll need to register your My eMish account and then complete your, no, 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 completely, where's it? Oh, fill out the Amy Roman form. That's where that is. Okay. Um, let me stop sharing this really quick. Alrighty, if you guys have um, any questions about um, admissions and uh, maybe the status of your application or anything like that, I will put my email address in the chat and you guys can shoot me an email if you have any other questions. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys Monday. Enjoy your, your long weekend and have, be safe. <laughs>